Hey, so uh, I recently ran into an issue where um, I had two NVMe drives that I wanted to raid. And when I did, I ran into a hard four gigabytes per second limit. Um, I started poking around looking for ways to bypass that and couldn't really find any good videos on it. So I figured I'd make an attempt. Um, so obviously we have a much higher limit in the PCI Express slots on the motherboard. So um, I went about trying to figure out how to use that. Um, so that's what this video is about. Uh, so theoretically we would have a total of 20 gigabytes per second via those uh, 20 PCIe lanes on the motherboard. Uh, the four DMI lanes and the 16 uh, PCI Express lanes via the slots. Um, so this video is pretty much just going to be spelling that out. So that's it. So this is the layout of the CPU. Uh, this is an 8086 or um, 8700K. And you'll notice it has a four times DMI limit and a 16 times PCIe limit. And that's all the bandwidth that's coming in and out of the processor from your, um, from those components of your system. So that's the limit we're trying to get to is both of them instead of just the times four DMI limit. Okay, so first I just wanna give you a baseline for one of these drives and what they can do. Um, this is gonna be using the default settings in Crystal Dismark, and so all the other tests. Um, you'll see it comes pretty close to the rated speed for the drive, and it'll just give you sort of a basis for comparison here for uh, the tests coming up. Okay, so the first method that uh, I'm going to talk about is using an add-in card on the um, it's a, it's a four lane card. Uh, it can either be put in a four lane slot uh, on your motherboard or into one of the 16 time slots if you have a SLI board or a crossfire board. Um, as long as there's at least four lanes, you won't see any degradation of, of speed for that drive. Um, then once you put that in, uh, it should just show up in Windows like a normal drive. Since you're not booting from it, you don't have to worry about those complications because uh, some of the older motherboards won't let you do that. Um, then you're going to go ahead and bind that with uh, whatever onboard M.2 or U.2 drive you've got on your motherboard uh, to create a software RAID 0 and at that point you should be able to use the full bandwidth of both drives on a single volume. So um, we'll go ahead and test that now. Okay, so this is the speed test for the dual NVMe RAID. Um, when you put these in, like if you put both of them in the M.2 slots on the motherboard without using anything to bypass the DMI, uh, it will cap you at four gigabytes per second, um, which means your read won't go up at all because these are well, I mean, it might go up a little bit, but these are almost four gigabytes a second NVMe drives, so you're not going to see a big benefit from reads. Uh, since they're 2.5 gigabytes a second write, you will see that sort of edge up closer to the four gigabytes a second limit, so you will get faster writes in that case. Um, and some of your um, smaller, your you know, your random access scores and stuff like that, some of those will go up as well. So it's not completely useless, but um, in this case, this is running one in the motherboard and one in the uh, PCI, PCIe X16 slot uh, that a, the second graphics card would go in in this board. Um, and it is running at X16 currently just because it doesn't really make a difference, um, but you can scale that down to, to four. Um, or in this board's case, you can do um, X16 on the top slot and then X8 on two of the others. Um, 
So you could put a few of these cards in there if you wanted to, and push these numbers even higher. I believe the theoretical limit where you'd stop getting advantages on this board is with three add-in cards and the one onboard NVMe drive. Alright, so uh, method two is going to be using your system RAM to accelerate existing volumes uh, without needing additional hardware system as long as you have a reasonable amount of RAM. Um, really anything over 8 gigs you should be able to use the system cache most of the time and it won't reserve the memory at least not in the program that I've tested so far um, so you can still use that in any memory intensive um, applications um, this I mean the program that I'm using has a free trial so there's no real investment here if you like it I think it's thirty dollars something like that I'll put a link in the description um, but this is a very um, fiscally responsible way to try and get faster storage on your system. Um, so I would recommend trying this first, and if it's not sufficient, then you know go with method one or combine the two, which is the last the last part that I'm going to show. And uh, I will show um, in my NVMe raid and on my um, normal spinning drives what sort of effects this has um, and they're pretty dramatic so I do like this method so far so let's look at that so uh, this is the test for my spinning drives 7200 rpm NAS drives um, with the cache off and uh, it is a RAID 1 not a RAID 0 so it's meant for mirroring and it's just got it's essentially cold storage for like, you know, documents and basically user info, stuff that I don't need quick access to. Um, but we'll run through the test here just to show you how painful spinning drives are. Uh, <laughs> when, when compared to SSDs, obviously they're a lot slower, but it's especially painful when you are dealing with an NVMe drive normally and then you drop down to these. So here we go. Okay, so pretty much the same amount of time, about five and a half minutes to run this test, but uh, now we'll go ahead and turn the cache on and uh, see if it makes a difference for these uh, spinning drives. Okay, it does. It does, but you'll see. Okay, so here's a uh, file copy test we're going to do. It's uh, 1.3 gigabytes. Notice transferring to that same, you know, 100 megabyte per second-ish read-write speed a spinning drive that we were working with earlier. Um, it's essentially instant, whereas it should have taken a little bit of time. Um, You'll notice it transferring it back is like three point something gigabytes per second. So it's there's definitely real world speed involved here, and we'll uh, make a few copies here and see if we can cap out the cache just to show you what happens when it actually does cap out because it's pretty bad when it does. Yeah. So the cache definitely makes a big difference. big difference. And you'll see there at the end the cache picked up a, a little bit but definitely not enough. And uh, once the cache is exhausted it uh, it takes a minute to come back and this is uh, 
This is about how painful it would be normally on those drives. And I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and fast forward this part so you guys don't have to sit through it. Alright, so the last method, uh, well, I guess it's not a method in and of itself, uh, that I'm going to be talking about is using both at once. Um, I mean, I guess we can jump right into that because um, it's just way faster um, when the cache is active and, and when it's not. It's, uh, it's pretty intense, so we'll, we'll look at the numbers there and then uh, I'll go over it after. Okay, so picking up at the end of the last test we did on the NVMe RAID and we're going to enable the cache but we're going to disable the deferred write function and the deferred write function in this case is basically where all of your write speed from the cache comes from so with that disabled you're really only going to see major differences in the read speeds which you will see right there it's pretty pretty intense so at this point we're pretty much limited by that combination uh, 20 lanes going into the processor so you know once you're bumping up against that there's no realistic way on this platform to get any higher than that however um, you know you can get a little faster than this I've gotten results closer to 19 gigabytes a second and I, I'll go ahead and post some images of that up um, that I have saved. But just in a normal use, once again, while recording this video to this drive, these are pretty good results. So we'll go through there, and uh, then next we'll do the uh, deferred. All right, so about five minutes later, the test is done, and we can go ahead and enable the deferred rights. And then uh, once we do that, we can rerun the test and see the difference. Notice we were at about 3.1 gigs uh, right on that test. And uh, we'll go ahead and show you where the uh, settings to change are for that. So another five minutes later, and here we are. You'll notice that uh, we're at about four times the write speed that we were at before. Now, obviously, this isn't indefinite. You know, if you transfer enough files, you will exhaust that cache, and you'll drop back down to the uh, you know depressingly slow three or four gigabytes a second. But uh, you know, it's pretty good for for average use. Okay, so. Um, I mean, obviously you saw the results in the video. If you've gotten this far, um, I'm gonna put a few other results up on the screen just so you can see in general what the results are when uh, there's not a whole lot going on on the computer at the same time. Um, I thought it would be more important to show the actual video of the test so it's not just, you know, Photoshop numbers or whatever. Um, and that I figured that would be more important than actually seeing the highest numbers. Um, but, you know, there are certain situations where they get a little bit higher. Um, 
some are poking right against that 20 gigabyte limit, uh, namely the first result that I'm putting on screen right now. So um, try it out yourself, see if you like it, and um, let me know if you want me to test anything else or uh, you know post any more uh, explanations on how to do stuff.